Okay, let's see. Let's go back to blue. And we will let S equal the set 1, 1, 0, 0. That's the first vector in the set. And then we have 2, 0, 1, 0. That's the second vector in the set. 0, 1, 2, negative 1, third vector. And we have 0, 1, negative 1, 0. Okay, let S be a basis, an ordered basis, for R4. Again, we have four numbers, we have four vectors, so it's R4. Now, let's choose a random vector V. Let V in R4 be the vector minus 1, 2, minus 6, and 5. Okay, we want to We want to find the coordinate vector of this vector with respect to this basis. So stop and think about this for a second. I have some vector, you know, that I've just represented as minus 1, 2, minus 6, 5. But I have a different basis than I'm normally accustomed to. So I want to find the coordinates of this vector with respect to this basis. Okay. See what we're going to do. Well, here's what we want. We want constants C1, C2, C3, C4, such that C1 times the first vector, 1, 1, 0, 0, plus C2 times the second vector, 2, 0, 1, 0, plus C3 times 0, 1, 2, negative 1, plus C4 times 0, 1, negative 1, 0 is equal to our vector v, which is minus 1, 2, minus 6, and 5. This is what we want. Uh, the idea is we take these basis vectors, we write the vector that we're looking for as a linear combination of these things, and now we have to solve this. Well, this is just a linear system. So we set it up as a linear system, as a 4 by 5 augmented matrix. So it's going to be uh, 1, 1, 0, 0. We just take these as columns. 2, 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 2, negative 1. And then we take 0, 1, negative 1, 0. 0, 1, negative 1, 0. And we augment this with minus 1, 2, minus 6, and 5. We're just solving a times x equals b. In this particular case, x are the constants. That's what we're looking for. We subject this to reduced row echelon, well, subjected to Gauss-Jordan elimination to get the reduced row echelon form, and we end up with the following. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. It's not a 6, that's a 0. And 0, 0, 0, 1, and we end up with 23, minus 12, minus 5, minus 16. Therefore, our coordinate vector for V with respect to the basis that we were given is equal to, nope, we can't have that. Let's make sure these are clear. We have 23 minus 12, minus 5, minus 16. That is our answer. With respect to this basis, the vector is 23, minus 12, minus 5, minus 16. These numbers up here, minus 1, 2, minus 6, and 5, this vector was given to it because that's the standard basis. In R4, it's the, imagine IJK with one extra vector. Basically, it's something in the x direction, something in the y direction, something in the z direction, and something in the 
L direction. Again, we're talking about a four-dimensional space. We can't see it, but we can still treat it mathematically. Mutually orthogonal vectors. That's why, that's why this and this are different. We're talking about the same point, but in order for us to identify that point, to give it a label, to give it a name, we need to choose a basis. We need to choose a point of reference, a frame of reference. That's what all of modern science is based on. All of measurement is based on. We need something from which to measure something. Our frame of reference, well, here it's the standard basis, the basis of mutually orthogonal unit vectors. Here, it's a completely different basis. Well, no one, this one basis is not necessarily better than this one. We're just accustomed to this one. We think that that's the one, that this vector is actually minus 1, 2, minus 6, and 5. It's not. This minus 1, 2, minus 6, 5 actually, actually has nothing to do intrinsically with that point. It has to do with our imposing a, a label on that point so that we can deal with it mathematically. This, this, this set of coordinates it's, is just as good as this set of coordinates. This basis is just as good as the natural basis. That's what you have to... So now we're getting into the idea of you know, linear algebra. We want to sort of disabuse ourselves of the things that we have become accustomed to. That just because we've become accustomed to them doesn't mean that they are necessary or necessarily better than anything else that we might develop for these mathematical objects. Okay. Uh, let's actually demonstrate this mathematically, uh, this whole idea of the standard basis.